Welcome to the Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Technical Education and Research Center. In 2004, a national level institute AMGITA has been started in the field of engineering and technology as per guidelines of All India Council for Technical Education AICTE New Delhi. AMGITA is approved by AICTE New Delhi, Gujarat state and affiliated to Gujarat Technological University Ahmedabad which is also known as GTU our goal is to be a institute of generative ideas so that we remain relevant to our society the amgita has always been an organization on move with continuous effort on improving its processes and to maintain its relevance to the indian science scenario with adding new programs in its programmatic portfolio we strongly believe in overall development of students so for that we provide them a different platform like state level tech fest project fair different sports activity which helps students to teach team work and problem solving skills to get physical health benefits boost self esteem and reduce pressure and stress for prove their skills in distinct area we welcome to the virtual class of basic of electrical engineering myself professor gaurang patel from mahatma gandhi institute of technical education and research center today what we are going to do we are going to do some of the very basic fundamentals and necessary information regarding the basics of electrical engineering so let's begin with what are the main parts of elect- electrical engineering so it starts with the generation with the generation then <coughs> it is having the transmission distribution and utilization okay in uh, part of generation we can in, we can include that we can include that how the electricity is going to be generated so before proceed for the generation we are just uh, uh, try to know about where the electricity is going to be first Uh, evolved or it's going to be discovered okay so the the fundamental principle of electricity generation were discovered in the 1820s and early 1830s by british scientist michael faraday uh, this is the picture of michael faraday you can see over here the great scientist which uh, he was invented the electricity and his method still used today is for electricity for generation of power okay and he discovered a very basic law that if you have a loop of wire and if you fed the electric current then it produced the magnetic field or it is says that it is a faraday disk between the poles of magnet okay then commercial electricity production is started in 1870 if i would like to say it is commercial production that is started in 1870s okay it is a commercial production that is going to be started which is started with the uh, invention of the dynamo in that their coupling of the dynamo to the hydraulic turbine the mechanical product production of electrical power began the second industrial revolution and made possible several invention using electricity with the in the second revolution there is a major contribution by being thomas alva edison and nicolas tesla okay i will show the picture of the great scientist thomas alva edison who discover who has uh, many discoveries in in his name uh, especially he is very well known for the discovery of electric bulb okay and then here is the picture it is a picture of nicolas tesla okay so these are the three great scientists who contribute or who who play the major role to discover the electricity what we are going to use today okay 
वन सेकेंड आई विल रिपीट इज अ निकोलस टेस्ला इज अ थॉमस एडिशन एंड ही इज अ माइकल फेराडे हु प्ले अ वाइटल रोल टू डिस्कवर द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दैट वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू यूज दिस मॉडल वर्ल्ड ओके देन नेक्स्ट वी विल सी इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जनरेसन एट सेंट्रल पावर स्टेशन स्टार्टेड इन एटीन एटी टू ओके In 1882, there is a we can say it is starting of commercial production of electricity. Okay, when a steam engine driving a dynamo at Pearl Street Station produced a DC current, and that powered public lighting on Pearl Street, New York. There is a city uh, in New York where first. experiment or you can say first use of commercial electricity will be there and there is a production of dc current by the production of that dc current they are using as a light bulb so the new technology is quickly adopted by many cities around the world which adapted their gas fuel street lights to electric power they are using that power for the street lights soon after electric lights would be used in public buildings in businesses and to power public transport such as trams and trains so these are the initial uses of <coughs> electricity what are the uses which i said that is the power which is going to use by the public that is the public building you can see that public building that means the government houses etc trains trams etc so these are the commercial used that they are going to be used okay then i would like to talk about the first power plants usage okay so the first power plant initially used that was used by the coal power plant okay now in today's world there is there is a variety of energy sources are used we can uh, say that the coal okay as a electric source we the 80% of electricity in today's world that is satisfied by the coal okay so coal is the major source of electricity for today's modern world then in second number you can place the hydro power plant from which we can extract the electricity then nuclear energy at the third place i would like to place the nuclear energy okay other sources that we consider is it a renewable energy source the in that we can consider the wind power plant solar power plant tidal power plant so those are those all are the renewable energy sources but the major demands are satisfied by this three power plants so this three source of energy okay okay then next we will see that the electric field where the electric field comes from and what is the definition of electric field so if i would like to say to say something about the electric field that is if we define the electric field so electric field is defined as the electric force per unit charge it is defined by the electric force per unit charge and the direction of the field is taken to be the direction of the force it would exert on a positive test charge you can see the electric field is radially out from from a positive charge it is the radial uh, radially outward and you can see all those energies are going to outwards that is known as a positive charge this is we known as a positive 
चार एंड द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ दैट पॉजिटिव चार दैट इज इट इज रेडियली आउटवर्ड फ्रॉम अ पॉजिटिव चार एंड फॉर द नेगेटिव चार्ज वी कैन सी इट इज रेडियली इनवर्ड और रेडियली टूवर्ड यू कैन सी ऑल द फोर्सेस इज कमिंग टू द इनवर्ड्स ओके यू कैन सी ऑल दिस फोर्स इज गोइंग टू इनवर्ड्स दैट वॉट वी कैन कंसिडर एज अ नेगेटिव पॉइंट ऑफ चार्ज सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड what is the electric field is and what is the positive was what is the positive charge and what is the negative charge once again i would like to explain this positive charge and negative charge whenever you can see the field is going to outward from the point that is known as a positive charge and when ever there is a energy or electric field is going to inwards or towards to the point that is knowing as a negative charge it is very easy to understood okay then we will see what is the magnetic field those both are very important term for the electricity because without these two fields electric field and magnetic field there is no existence of electricity okay so over here i would like to say that a magnetic field is a vector field that describes the magnetic influence on moving electric charges and electric currents okay once again i would like to repeat that is a magnetic field is a vector field that describes the magnetic influence on moving electric charges electric currents and magnetized materials a charge that is moving in a magnetic field experiences a force perpendicular to its own velocity and to the magnetic field okay you can see there is a one conductor if you consider this is a conductor okay this is the conductor if i will pass the electric current through the conductor and this is the direction of conventional current okay this is the direction of conventional current this is the positive terminal of the battery and negative terminal of the battery which is which we are used this battery for pass the current through that conductor so whenever we pass the current from the conductor there is a magnetic field is produced around this conductor okay so it is the very basic principle to generate the magnetic field so whenever an electric current pass through the conductor there is a magnetic field produced around the conductor you can see the definition when current moves through a conductor a circular magnetic field is induced around the conductor okay so this principle is works in every motor for the generation of magnetic field okay so next we will see uh, some of the basic terms for the voltage and current okay so these are the two terms voltage and current which is repeatedly comes whenever you learn the electrical engineering okay so first of all we will see what is the voltage is and what is the current so we can consider the voltage is the energy required to move charge from one point to other okay so and it is measured in volts and voltage is denoted by v small v or the capital v okay so basically what is voltage def what definition says so it is the energy required to move charge if there is a charge at this point okay and i would like to transfer this charge from this place to the next destination about this place okay so if i want to move this charge from here to here 
then I would definitely need an energy and whatever the energy is required that is known as the voltage so very simple definition of the voltage and it is also known as the potential difference between the two points which is known as the voltage okay then we'll move towards the current so what is the current so current can be defined as the motion of charge okay so if there is a charge over here and there is a motion in the charge through this given resistor or any given conductor so it can be defined as the motion of charge through a conducting material so if there is a moment in charge from one place to another place it is known as a current or flow in another simple language there is a flow of current that is known a flow of electrons that is a known as a current okay so <clears throat> i hope you will very well understand about the definition of voltage and current okay so next we will see the some basic elements which are going to be used in electrical engineering and it is we are also relate those terms with the mechanical terms as well okay so it is the resistor okay so resistor it its name suggests that it is the inherent characteristic of opposition okay it is it's opposed the electric flow okay so if we want to relate this electric resistance with the mechanical field or mechanical friction so what is a friction is friction is equal to force upon speed so over here resistance if we if we would like to find the resistance there is a resistance is equal to voltage divided by current so whatever <coughs> current is passed through this resistance it depends it depends the voltage what we applied on that particular element okay so and next term that is the inductor okay so inductor in electric engineering inductor we can relate it with the mass in mechanical engineering so definition of mass that is equal to force into time by speed and over here the inductance we can define as voltage into time by current okay and another one inherent property of inductor that is it is going to be charged whenever electric current is passed through the inductor okay so in further we will see in depth what is the inherent property of inductor and what is the inherent property of resistor as well okay next important term that is the capacitor okay so capacitor is, is now <coughs> we can uh, compare with the spring and mechanical field so in spring basically what there is a speed into time divided by force but over here in capacitance we are going to consider there is a current into time divided by force and capac capacitor having the property that it can store the energy and it can be released the energy whenever we require okay so the capacitor can be stored the energy whenever we elect potential difference is applied between these two point and uh, it will store the energy in between these two plates and we can use this energy when there is a requirement of energy okay so this very basic components of electrical engineering there is a capacitor inductor and resistor and we know the, now what are the definition of resistor inductor and capacitor okay now next term i would like to explain you with you guys that is the ac and dc current so basically in electrical engineering there is a two types of electric current are there there is an ac and dc current the basic difference of the ac and dc current you can see that there is in dc current there is a constant magnitude okay you can see there is a constant magnitude at each and every time of interval 
you can say at each and every time of interval there is a constant magnitude so which is known as a dc current and if you consider that an ac current this is the graph of ac current <coughs> so difference is what there is no constant magnitude with reference to time there is a each and every time interval the magnitude is going to be varied you can see at this time interval the magnitude is different at this time interval magnitude is different and at this time interval magnitude is different so in ac supply it will start from the minimum going to the maximum and once again start to the minimum then once again going towards the negative maximum and one again comes to the zero point so property of ac or sinusoidal current is it is having the same magnitude at the both polarity at the positive as well as the negative polarity okay so there is the basic difference between dc current and the ac current i hope you understand uh, what is a dc current so dc current having the constant magnitude with respect to time and ac current having the varying magnitude of varying magnitude with respect to time so this is the basic difference between ac and dc current okay then next this is the one of the example of direct current what it what it says that a current created by the unidirectional moment of charge okay there is the unidirectional moment you can see there is the unidirectional moment of charge this is the element or load you can consider so that is what definition says a current created by the unidirectional moment of charge through a conductor is called a direct current and this current is produced by all batteries so the current produced by the batteries that is the dc current you can say that okay and that is the production of ac voltage uh, for production of ac voltage over here you can understood there is a uh, two permanent magnet if we consider it is having a n pole and that is the s pole um, and this is the nothing but the magnet okay so due to this magnet there is a magnetic field around over here okay so whenever if you place a conductor this is a conductor that is placed in between the magnetic field so whenever you place the conductor in the magnetic field and if you give the supply to that conductor there is an emf is induced in it you can see this emf is induced in it and it is having the different magnitude at different inst instant okay so at when this loop is come at this position it is zero when it's rotated and comes to this position it is having this magnitude when it comes at perpendicular to that it is having a maximum magnitude when it rotate and comes at this position it is having this kind of shape at no, no, position number 5 once again it comes to zero at position number 6 there is a magnitude position number 7 once again it it is a negative maximum we can say that it is a negative maximum okay and once again at this position it is going to be zero so there is the there is the repeatedly pro, repeated process which is going to be happen and that's how the ac voltage is generated okay so there is the production of ac voltage is there okay now <coughs> there is also an very important term in electrical engineering that is the uh, rectifier okay so rectifier it is a device which convert 
द ए सी सप्लाई इन टू द डी सी सप्लाई सो एट सो मेनी प्लेसिस वी आर यूजिंग वी आर यूज अ डी सी सप्लाई इंस्टेड ऑफ ए सी सप्लाई फॉर एग्जाम्पल अवर वेर वी यूज द डी सी सप्लाई फॉर चार्जिंग अवर मोबाइल फोन फॉर चार्जिंग अवर लैपटॉप वी डेफिनेटली रिक्वायर्ड अ डी सी सप्लाई सो दिस इज द ट्रांसफॉर्मर दैट इज प्लेस्ड एंड इट इज द स्टेप डाउन ट्रांसफॉर्मर वॉट इज द ट्रांसफॉर्मर एंड स्टेप डाउन ट्रांसफॉर्मर वी विल लर्न in uh, one by one hour lecture session of bwe but just uh, keep in mind this is the transformer and it is a step down transformer which converts this 240 volts ac supply as the required 14 volts dc supply okay once it step down the supply it is given to this rectifier circuit this is the rectifier circuit which convert this ac supply this is the ac cycle and with the help of this rectifier circuit we will get this dc supply you can see clearly over here this is the dc supply which is converted from this waveform with the help of this rectifier okay so there is a function of rectifier which converts the ac into <coughs> this is so <coughs> keep remember the function of rectifier it is very basic it converts the ac supply into the dc supply okay then next it is a heart of the electrical engineering it this equipment which is known as a transformer okay and if we want to define the definition of the transformer a transformer is basically an electromagnetic static equipment based on the principle of faraday's law of electric magnetic induction okay so this transformer working principle of transformer is that it is works on the law of electromagnetic induction so whenever you giving the supply of at one side of this section if you consider this is a primary section if i will give the supply to that primary section due to the property of electric field it will induce the magnetic field toward the secondary and so the emf is induced in the secondary side and you will get the amount of voltage as whatever you desired at the secondary side so this is the function of the transformer okay so these are the some main equipments that is we learn about the transformer rectifier and all those equipments then next we see that so after all uh, after at the end of this uh, presentation i would like to say what are the main advantages of electrical energy okay uh, it is having very convenient form we can see convenient in the sense of uh, we can easily produce with the help of different sources it can be easily controlled there are so many equipments that uh, we can control the elect um, that electrical energy which we are going to be produced it is having the greater flexibility because the once you produce the electrical energy you can transmit at anywhere and you can step up and step down those electrical supply as per your requirement so it is having that we can say that it is having the greater flexibility and it is having the high transmission efficiency because we can transmit this electrical energy at from one place to the another place where we want to use this electric power so we can easily transmit through the transmission line with the help of different equipments okay so students i hope you understood very well what are the basics of electrical engineering and at the end i just would like to say that whenever you don't use the electric current or electrical energy please turn off the switches of the electrical equipment so we can save the electrical energy okay
थैंक यू वेरी मच